Well, it's time to start working on the plane, I guess. Got the new engine over there in the box. Wanted to start this earlier this winter, but then we didn't know when the engine was coming. And it was so doggone cold here. It really couldn't do any work out here in the hangar. I've got little heaters in here, but that, that was not enough to warm it up. It was around zero degrees, 15 degrees to minus 15 degrees. And I was spending all my time either plowing snow or shoveling snow or dealing with the cold. I've called the mechanics and they're going to be here. I'm not sure exactly when they're going to be here. I haven't got word back from Nikolai yet when they're coming, but sometime within the next couple of weeks. It's the 1st of April now and I should start, would start flying sometime within the next week or so, a little bit, but we're not going to be ready. I might as well start getting stuff ready for them so it doesn't take as long for them to be here to, to get everything together. So one of the things I can do is go ahead and, and strip that old engine, pull that old engine off of there, and there's some parts I need to go ahead and check out and then there's some things I need to get ordered. Well, we'll start out by pulling the cowling. Now the cowling on a Super Cub generally is five pieces. There's two sheet metal plates, one that goes on the top and one that goes on the bottom and they're just held on with four screws each and then there's a stringer that goes from the firewall out to the nose bowl ties into it and when you put the top piece on and the bottom piece on that stiffens all that up and keeps the nose bowl in position and then there's two big doors the doors are just held on underneath the screws for the top piece and then they have two like suitcase latches that uh, go on on the bottom to hold them on this airplane was uh, rebuilt by cub crafters and it has a cub crafters cowling on it which is basically a two-piece cowling what well, has these big doors on here still like this and uh, these are aluminum metal swing back and forth but they latch onto the bottom cowling with four South Co fasteners and got winged fasteners on there so you don't need a tool to take them off or anything. And then the top cowling and the nose bowl are one piece and then they're held on with two screws in the back into a bracket that was fabricated and bolted onto the firewall in place of the stringer that goes through there. And uh, then they're held on to the front cowling with uh, uh, four number six screws here and two number ten screws up in front. And then you have the bottom cowling, and it's held on basically onto the top cowling here with uh, th th these screws, and then with two number 10 screws on the bottom. So that makes it two pieces. It's split here in the nose bowl, and that's nice because the original cowling, cub cowling, the nose bowl was one piece, and to get it off, you had to pull the propeller off, which made it kind of a pain because that's you need to take that off to work on the starter or on the alternator or generator. Now this one has a, a long air filter on it. Some of them have a square, little square air filter on them. This one has the big air filter on it with a scoop here. And that's just, well that's sheet metal aluminum and that's riveted onto the bottom of the bottom cowling. Oh, it's nice because those big double doors on there on both sides, you can practically do a cylinder change without pulling the cowling off of it. Do a lot of work in there without pulling the cowling off and really get in and look at the engine for pre-flights and stuff like that. So that's the first thing, we'll get that cowling off of there. Guess I'm going to have to get new batteries. These don't seem to last very long anymore. I got that top cowling off. Well here's the brackets that hold the top cowling on here that go onto the firewall. These are just homemade brackets. In fact I made these when I built the airplane. And we got the same thing down here on the bottom. Well I forgot that there is a bar here that attaches onto the cowling here onto this rail. There's a, a strut here or spar here that goes forward on this cowling where the nut plates are attached to that hold the doors closed. And then there's a rod that attaches there to that and goes back here to the engine mount on both sides back in there. Those are kind of a pain in the butt to get off air filter has got to come off and then this thing slides forwards off of the rod that comes out of the air box, carburetor air box. There's a long rod 
and a fixture that goes in there and uh, this thing slides off of it and then the cowling slides forward there and then there's a hose that goes down from the front of the baffling and goes into the shroud around the muffler and that's held on with a screw right there so that screw right there has to come out too so well, that's the next step is to take that lower cowling off of there Now we got the engine exposed to the air and we can inspect some of this stuff. So the next thing I got to do is take the spark plug leads off there. I probably should have done that first. Those magnetos, they can fire their self-contained ignition system and they can fire with the props turned any at all. I've got the switches off which grounds them out but you never want to trust that. Just like never trusting the safety on a gun. And we'll do an inspection on the rest of the airplane. We got some more things that we got to take off and swaps over to the other engine. The baffling is one of the things here. That's what diverts the air over the cylinders to, to cool the cylinders. And then of course we've got the alternator here mounted right in here in the front. Uh, that's got to come off. The intake tubes here are part of the engine assembly. They're on the other engine. Well, those don't come off, they stay on. But here is the exhaust stack and uh, this one comes off the number one cylinder, crosses over and connects into, what does it connect into, the number two, number three cylinder, number four cylinder I think and then goes to the muffler and then this one is the number three and that crosses over. Got an EGT probe right here and then the muffler back here and uh, that's all part of the airframe and then we've got primer system here this comes off the fuel lines this uh, there's a primer pump in the cockpit and you push that and this sprays gas into each one of the cylinders to help them start uh, those come out of there and those go switched over to the other engine well we can ex inspect some of this stuff here this is the oil pressure line comes out of the engine and goes up into this switch and we have electronic oil pressure indicator in the airplane and then uh, more baffling. This is the rear baffling here. We've got a tube that comes out of that that blows cold air down here on the magnetos. And then in this side over here on the right side there's an opening in the baffling in the back here. And that goes down here and goes into the shroud around the muffler to provide air in there. And then we've got another opening here that comes out goes in through the firewall this is for the back seat heat we get the tachometer cable goes in right there and then this is a oil filter here this is an adapter that I put on so that's coming off there and going on to the new engine the magnetos here of course they stay on we got new magnetos this is the engine mount here and uh, this is where the engine mounts up to it see the rubber donut there it's a conical rubber mount that uh, goes in there and then there's a bolt that comes through here. I think that's a number eight bolt that comes through the engine mount there. That's what holds it on. And there's the front side of it there, the engine side of it. This is the oil pressure valve here. This is what adjusts the oil pressure through the engine. That's uh, set up on the other engine already. I was looking at the paperwork on that and they did the test run on it and everything and showed that it was good. So we got push rod tubes and then here's the cylinder. This is where the cylinder is bolted up. You can see there's four bolts on the top, four on the bottom. You have two big ones here and then two smaller ones down here on the middle. So each one of those cylinders can come off and then here's the inner cylinder baffling. That stays on, that goes with the engine. Well here's the carburetor air box. This is what we took the air filter off of. This is the long tube that comes out of there. And that's the air box there. Air goes in here. Then there's a valve in there that switches back. And let's see if we can see that in there. Yeah, there it goes. 
that blocks off the fresh air and then opens it up to heated air to in case you have carburetor ice. And this is the carburetor here that mounts up to the oil sump. Dusty stuff here is indicative of an exhaust leak. I'll have to check the exhaust system out and see where that's coming from. I think I have another stack someplace I can pull this stack off of there. Got one that's been overhauled and I can send this one in to get it overhauled. Anyway, this is a baffling on this side. You say it's been beat up and repaired several times. So we'll see what we can do with that. And the, got an opening here in the front of this baffling that goes down. through this hose and then goes into the muffler shroud there and then it comes out down to the bottom of that muffler shroud and goes up here into the carburetor air box and that provides heat and air in case you get carburetor ice and there's another opening that comes out of the middle of that shroud that goes in here for heat for the engine or for the cockpit this is a gas collator here this is the hose this is one of the hoses I want to repair place comes from the fuel gas collator and goes into the carburetor and then we have oil cooler here that's attached to the rear baffling and then we've got hoses that come off of the engine for that and then this is a breather for the crankcase ventilation system comes out of the engine goes down dumps out down here hey that's it engines opened up She's been harassing me, wanting attention all the time I've been taking this cowling off and stuff. She followed me up to the basement to get tools and over to the shop to get tools and been climbing on my leg, wanting attention and stuff. <laughs> now she's playing with a ball out of one of the float compartments there in the front. This is what the engine mount. Uh, rubbers look like the bushings that go in there conical bushings one goes in each side of the uh, engine part of the mount the flange on the engine and then uh, Got a washer goes up against this side one side here with a bolt head going through it and then on the other side this mounts up against a Pad on the engine mount itself on the airframe engine mount uh, This is a used one old one. Change those out every, about every 500 hours or so. 